Hey guys, what's up? Um, it has been a while since I did a video, and I uh, just wanted to do a quick update that you guys know I'm working on. I haven't been on much because I'm a grandma now, so I've been doing grandma stuff. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I'm just going to show you guys what I have that I'm working on. Um, I don't like having a bunch of projects just like here and there in the mix, so to speak, but um, I have three or four blankets that I'm working on, a stuffy, and a baby cocoon. Um, those, that's what I'm doing right about now. Excuse me. And I got some spinning. I don't know if I showed you guys the spinning the last time I podcast or did a video or hear everyone say it. So, I got my hair cut today. So, that's why it's flat iron. Uh, so, yeah. I'm still working on the, the Bavarian stitch blanket. I put it down for a minute so that I can work on some other projects. So this is the pretty, pretty side. And this has been made using all Encore, Encore, Plymouth Encore yarns, wool, which is a 25% acrylic, no, 25% wool 75% acrylic blend so this I have uh, one two three three or three more balls of yarn to finish that blanket I might have another block ball of a gray yarn that's Plymouth Encore that I might put in it I don't know yet the next blanket that I'm working on is a knit blanket it's in the basket weave stitch and it's Using Hobby Lobby's pastels, the color is number one zero zero two. Uh, it's made in Turkey, and it's worth the wait. It's a tweed. So this is how far I've gotten so far. I need to pull that needle ball when it come out, but you can see. The basket weave stitch starting to show up. So this is going to be for my bee in the fall. So that's that. Okay. So the next blanket is this shell stitch blanket. And it's in pink. And and it's, it's going to be in three different shades of pink. And it's also going to be some white in between the pinks. Um, kind of like the break it up. Strawberry shortcake stuff. And then I have a baby cocoon I'm working on. Which is in purple. And this is a red heart yarn. Um, I don't know what happened to the ball band, but it's the bottom is um crochet, and then I pick up the stitches and I'm knitting the rest of it, and then I'll do like a ribbon at the top of it. So I'm making that for Milka's son. And then the next project I still haven't finished is my brother's pig. I don't know. I'm just about pigged out. I reckon I just gotta do, I just gotta do the tail, the ears, and the feet, and it's done. So, once I do this cocoon tonight, I'll probably finish this pig tomorrow. And that's everything knit-wise that I'm working on. Um, I don't know if I showed you guys this before. I'm not about to go back in time and look at videos and just, just check and see. But, I have three bobbins with yarn on it. It was actually four bobbins, it might be five. Just I'll have to find it over here in a second. There it is. Okay. I never said I was gonna this was gonna be organized and it never has been, so y'all should be okay with that. 
So anyway, I have these three bobbins. This one is bamboo silk. This one is BFL. And this one is BFL. And so these are going to be two plied together. These are spun on my spin lucian queen bee. Okay. And then I have the, this was the last of my yarn from Maryland Sheep and Wool 2016. And, um, so yeah. So that was the last of the commercial fiber that, from Maryland Sheep and Wool 2016. Um, I do have some white commercial fiber. Um, that, um, is, I think it's a Polworth or Polworth silk blend. It was one of those heritage, it could be, or it could be one of those heritage yarns that I was spinning at one point in time. But I'm gonna be dying that. I have to decide when me and my husband are gonna do a dye day. Y'all probably can't hear me, but, um, so my husband and I will do a dye day, a dye day, probably in August or September. And we'll be plant, we'll be dyeing some Romney and some, here it is, let's see. Some tent seal, some tease water, that's what this is, some tease water. We'll be dyeing that. And uh, and I also have some BFL that we're going to be dying. So we're going to have a, a die a die day, or not necessarily a die day, a die weekend in August. And um, that's pretty much all I have going on right now. I am planning, knock on wood, to be going to Rhinebeck. I've already bought my tickets. I'm now planning my trip up there. Um, I don't know because I know my husband wants to go and visit his mom. She's from Brook. She's in Brooklyn. His mom and his brothers. And um, so I don't know if we're going to be renting a car and driving up, or if we're going to take the train. Uh, so we don't have to worry about driving. And because um, when, when you get older, as you get older, you get tired of all that driving. I'm serious. It's just like even though I'm not the one driving. I'm tired of riding. <laughs> I don't drive in New York because um, I think a southerner with road rage is worse than a New Yorker with road rage because we're used to, I'm used to driving big vehicles. I don't think I would have a problem with running somebody over. <laughs> you know, we hit deer and stuff all the time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I don't think, I just don't, and it's, I just don't like the way it's just so chaotic and no harmony and hatefulness and it's just just a bad experience and I don't want to deal with it so I don't drive in New York when we go to New York he drives yeah uh so that's pretty much all I got going on guys um I'll let you know when the blankets are finished if not then you know I always post pictures of stuff I'm working on and finishing it on Instagram so you know you can always go over to Instagram and check out you know projects because I I keep up with them over there better than than YouTube and other stuff, but uh, I do have my audience here, um, people that I like to keep in touch with, and the people who can, can see me live, almost live in person, so recording, but I was live when I did it, <laughs> and that's pretty much it, uh, I just, I'm tired, <laughs> tired, this has been a very emotional year for me, for sure. Um, you guys know my mom passed away in April the 2nd, and we weren't able to bury her until May, and then, and that was after my, the week my daughter's, um, daughter was born, my oldest daughter had her first child, and we were, we were, um, we were able to do the burial, we couldn't do the burial because it was so much rain, it kept raining, kept raining, kept raining, and um, the county my parents are in, it was one of those counties that were, you know, was in the 
the, the flood zones and stuff between the Noose River. My parents are between the East Cape Fear River tributaries and the Noose River um, basin. And so if, if the flooding, the river they are, is a little higher, higher over the water table there because of all the rain was so high that we could, they couldn't bury. You know, as soon as they started digging, they hit water. And so they had to wait for the water table to drop. And like every time it like it's going to get dry enough that we could do the burial, we would get more rain and the water would rise right back up. So we finally were able to do the burial and we had to do a vault burial because of the water table in that area. Um, so that made it more expensive, but at least we know that, you know, we won't be getting a call saying, you know, <laughs> your mom, mom is no longer in the ground. <laughs> and um, and because of all the rain and hurricanes and stuff, they've had some um, coffins from the uh, 50s and early 60s that have actually, they've had to actually go and, and move the graves and rebury because they popped up. And luckily, the family still knew who was where and who it was and things of that nature. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's all that's going on. That was going on. Um, I'm like I said, I'm going to Rhinebeck for New York Sheep and Wool. Um, so if you see me, feel free to come up and say hi, give me a hug, and all that stuff. I'm not a touchy touchy feeling person, but I do do hugs now. <laughs> And um, you'll probably see me if it's cold. I'll probably have on one of my ponchos because I haven't made a sweater yet. Not for me. I've made one for baby. I made one for child, you know, small child. I made like a shirt, but I couldn't wear them because I didn't account for the boobage. So even though it, you know, it fit, it was just too tight across the boobage. So the next sweater I make, I'm going to have to have um, someone guide me when it comes to doing increases for the boobage area. Um, so that the sweater will fit nice and be nice, you know. If not, I'll just have to go the cardigan route because you could always button and zip up the cardigan. And, um, yeah, so that's what's going on with that. And, um, you guys take care and, uh, just try and stay positive and just, like I said, just keep on moving. You know, it is what it is. It'll either, it'll either cure you or kill you. <laughs> But you don't want to be in between, so you got to you got to find the cure, and uh, it might take a little while, but you'll find it. And um, there's always gonna be days where I get melancholy and weepy, and um, according to my therapist, that's perfectly fine. That's that's normal. That is me actually dealing with the grief on those weepy days because it's. Those of you who've lost a parent, um, or a sibling, or, or a husband, you know, or wife, or a child, or someone who, who raised you, put it like that, that was very close to you. It might have even been a family member. It could have been a church member or something. You understand what I'm talking about when you have those moments where just little things remind you of that person and you just can't handle it. You just start crying. And sometimes it feels like you're not even thinking about that person and all of a sudden you start crying. It's like, why am I crying? But subconsciously, somehow something triggered your emotions and you know it has to do with that person because the hurt you feel is different for every person you lose. It's a different type of pain. And, you know, that pain is for that individual. And so I know what my mother's, the pain I feel for losing my mom feels like. See, you know what I'm talking about? This is therapeutic, so y'all just bear with me. <laughs> so, you know, it was different from the pain of losing my grandmas. It was different, and each of their pain was different that I felt. So it's, it's very, the pain you feel is very individualized towards that person you have lost. And it should be because that person was their own individual. So the way you feel inside when you when you hurt for them is different. Um, so no, there's no shame in it, in 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 um, having grief and dealing with your grief, in finding ways to deal with your grief that are positive. Um, don't try to close it all in. Um, find somebody to talk to, anybody to talk to, even if you. Go on Craigslist and look for some type, not Craigslist, but um, what's it called? Well, meet up and find a, a grief group or something, somewhere where you can have an outlet. And if you don't want to be around people you don't know, then find a group 
somewhere that's maybe in the town next time over or something where you can go and, and do your bereavement and talk about it with them and you don't have to worry about it getting back to your your peers, your your work people and all that stuff. There's there's ways to do it. They even have online grief councils and stuff now and that's an option because you know it, you need to talk to somebody. I had to talk to somebody. I still need to talk to somebody from time to time. And it helps. Every time you get to talk out those feelings and discuss it, it gets it out. And you can take it's like it's like me picking up this yarn. Those, those those painful feelings, you can take them out. You can observe them. You can look at them. You can look at the plies and the twists of those thoughts and those memories. And you can find a way to accept the past, accept the present, and look forward to the future. And on that note, I'm going to let you guys go.